that was that was a rookie error going out that far without really knowing the boat. And the reason I'm going to film all this and release it is because this could help. You know, there might be one young fella who watches this and decides to, um, you know, get to know his boat before he goes on a trip, and that could save him. Morning guys, welcome back to another episode. It's such a good feeling to wake up on a remote island and find your boat still anchored out exactly where you left it. Honestly, it's such a relief. So today we're going to pack up here on the island. The weather's turned, as you guys can probably see. We've got really strong southeast winds. But I think it's going to get worse, um, which is um, I actually feel a bit sick in the stomach. It's so disappointing to be leaving, but there's more islands to explore up north here, so we're going to we're going to do that. Um, but we're going to head back and back to our main camp where the land cruisers are. Go on a big mission to try and get some more food, like as in some fresh produce. And um, there's a river. Where are we? There's a river way in there somewhere that I want to explore in the tinny. And then a big headland, I think you can see. In, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can see that there. There's a huge headland that protects us from the southeast winds where we're camped. Um, and it's got coral all around the headland, so I want to explore that too in the tinny. And um, have a big cook up, see if we can get some coastal content for you guys. Um, before we leave this morning, we're gonna, probably have one last dive whether it's out here protected like protected from the island or around the other side in the wind is where I found the crayfish frame and I've got this feeling that all this here is beautiful coral right beautiful live coral and around this side over here it's really rocky and ledgy like big flat rocks and I I think that's where the crayfish might be so I want to suss that out before we leave and um, we've got a high tide at about 10 o'clock, which is perfect to get back onto the beach where the land cruisers are. And we should be able to pull the boat out of the water there on that tide. So that's the plan, get back there just after 10, probably like, we've probably got till about 11 actually. The tide should still be okay. Um, so yeah, we better start packing up. We've had a bit of a sleep in this morning. Probably the best night's sleep we've had because we had a nice cool breeze from the southeast there. And I lifted my fly on the on the hammock so the breeze could get in underneath it. And um, I think because we're so exhausted from that big big day yesterday. But yeah, right now, coffee. I'm gonna make coffee, get our brekkie out, and um, start packing up and head back to base camp. Just doing the dishes down the beach here, and looked out, and the boats. We've lost the stern line on the boat. Oh, that's never pleasant when that happens. Bloody hell. 
I don't know who tried that knot. Must have been Dane. Yeah, you're doing alright if you can outswim a crocodile. That was you! It was! <laughs> like it didn't happen last night. You really want to rely on two points, at least two points, and you know, if that happens in the middle of the night, and then you're just relying on your front anchor, especially with this swell bouncing around, um, you know, you could drag an anchor. Then we'd be in trouble. So the plan, I'll let Dane sort that out. The plan is, we're just getting all our stuff, all our rubbish, leave no trace of us being here. You can see our big pile of gear up there on the beach. And geez, that's a good looking boat. How good is that boat? That's a Benito, guys. They're um, they're down in Brisbane. If you want to have a look, they they do a five meter version, which is this one, and a five point four or five point six version, which is a little bit bigger, and you can put a much bigger donk on it. Beautiful boat. It rides so well. I vouch for them. I reckon they're a great hull. Um, so yeah, we're going to leave all that stuff there on the beach for now, just because it's more weight, and shoot around the corner here where I took you guys last night a bit rough but we want to see if we can find some crayfish so that's the plan for now finish my coffee oh how good is this look at that there's something really special about coffee oh geez i love it i know it's bad but i love it all right while i'm here i'm going throwing some gear in the boat um, and I'm just rearranging our box and I thought I'd give you guys a couple of tips on some gear that we're not sponsored by so this isn't like you know I'm doing it for them I'm doing this for you guys just gear that we love to use um, actually some of it is from sponsors but I'm gonna tell you anyway um, these boxes here Expedition 134 are absolutely unreal they're really hardy you can stand on them jump on them so when they're in a boat you can they're like a step you know like you're not you're not walking around it when you've got a fish on you you just stand on top of it they're really strong they've got three clips on them so that and they've got this rubber seal <coughs> all the way around so they're watertight um and yeah and they're not they're not too big they're not too small i think they need to make more sizes i've told the boys that um for different things but these work really well for us we've just got two of them and um they work a treat so expedition 134 they're good uh, I've told you guys about the Osprey before, this thing is a weapon. I'll roll on some footage now so you can see exactly what it does, but they are really handy and as you can see they pack down to nothing. They're great. Um, what else? These, this kit here, so this is the Cedar Summit fry pan. Now this thing is absolutely hammered, but it folds down underneath like that. And then these fold into each other, so the hand that unlocks. That clicks and folds into there and the lid goes in there and the lid on top of this one and then that clicks in and really lightweight, the aluminium, there you go, that's the Alpha Pot. So that's the Cedar Summit Alpha Kit. What else do we like? Oh, the Tatonka bags. I use heaps of these Tatonka bags. We've got, oh, I don't know, maybe five of these in different sizes and colours and stuff. Um, but you just keep all your dry gear in there. Now these aren't watertight, they're not submersible, but I leave it in the rain on the boat and nothing inside gets wet. But if you were to drop it in the, in the ocean or in the river, um, your stuff's going to get wet. But they are really good, you can fit heaps in them. It's called a, a barrel bag, I think. And they open right up like that, so you can access everything. We've got pockets in them, zip up pockets, and they're really, really hardy bags, good stuff. And that's oh and the jet boil i love jet boils so i carry one of these everywhere we've got a few different sizes this is the minimo there you go jet boil minimo and they're really good inside you've just got oops you can actually fit if you get the smaller can it will fit inside the cup here um, and then the bigger one which is the sumo we've got that one as well these bigger cans fit inside the sumo so look here where can i put it it's the, it's the, sorry the camera cut out um it's the right size diameter to fit inside there but this can's just too big that's for a sumo 
Uh, and then inside you've just got your little your little um, cooker, which is this part. This just flips open like that, screws onto your lid or onto your can. And then um, this part just clicks on top. And it will boil in the windiest conditions, like right now, super windy. And it will boil water in like 30 seconds, a cup of water, no worries. Um, so jet boils are epic, they're really good. And the new ones come with this attachment that then clicks on top of that. So then you can use non-jet boil products like a, you know, to make my coffee, that then sits on top. Or you could use one of these pans or, you know, whatever. So you don't have to just cook in the cup. But the cups are good, like for hiking and that stuff. That's how I started using them. Um, all you need to take away is what is a jet boil and you can cook your um, you can cook soups in it you can cook bloody all your rice meals all that kind of stuff and then your coffee in the morning they're great and it's a cup for in the, in the day you know you can drink water so you're not taking you know you're not taking a cup and a pot and all these different appliances or utensils um, this will do the one that you know this will do everything so jet boils are great and that's about it guys that's about it for now that's our favourite gear that's around me right now So I'm gonna plug a microphone in because it's really windy and then we're just gonna just I don't know just plot along this area here and see if we can find some shelf kind of rocks and look for some crayfish. That's the plan. You get in the water first, you'll suit it up. <laughs> I got the side vision on on this uh, Raymarine unit. So this is the Raymarine uh, element and this is the 12 inch screen. And what we're doing is looking for any any rock. It's not real obvious here. I mean, you can see a rock shelf over there, but it's so different to the other side where it's all, it's all coral. This side just looks like plate rock and um, and then like sandy bottom with a bit of rubble. So on the sounder here, you can see these rocks out to the side. That's what we're doing, just looking for rocks out. That goes out at the moment. I've got it set to four, eight, about 12 meters either side. <laughs> all right, so this is the spot nice and clear and you can see that it's, it's like plate rock so hopefully under some of these crevices we can pick up a crayfish i'm just gonna stick right by dane and um watch out for crocs watch out for sharks try not to run over him What's he found? Come on, big crayfish. Crayfish or two. Come up with one between your legs and one in your hand. Come on, mate. Come on. We're good to get a few cray. We can take some back for the boys, have a big cook up on the fire. Bloody hell, where's he going? I've lost him again. There he is. We don't have much time, we really gotta get a wriggle on. There you go, he's gone down again. We're going to get a wriggle on because uh, I think it's about 9.30 right now. High was at like 10 past 10, I think. And we've got a motor all the way back. So there's some islands there. We've got to go past them. We've got to go way into the coast down there. I don't know how long it's going to take to get back. Depends how the boat goes. We've got a much smaller load now, obviously. We've got less fuel, less water to take back. So hopefully we can get up on the plane and just boogie. But we just don't know. It could be an hour. It could be two hours. What is it? Looks like a trout. He's just braining it, put it out of its misery. Nice, mate. Oh, is he through the spear?
Yep. He's all right. I'll show you this trout quickly. It's a good sized trout. There you go. Beauty. That's a coral trout. I'll bleed him in a sec and we'll have him later. So we're only taking a few fish. We're not out here raping and pillaging. Dane and I both believe in, and Dan, we're all like, you know, we want to hunt sustainably and this is probably the best way to do it. You're down there selectively hunting, looking for the odd coral trout and um, we're looking for crayfish. So it's not like we're filling freezers and selling fish and doing all that. We're just taking what we need. Normally we're up here in the dry season and we can hunt, we can hunt and fish for barramundi and they're on tap, you know, basically. When, when you're hungry, you catch a bar and you cook it. But barramundi season is closed at the moment, being the wet season. Not much longer and it'll be open again. But so this trip, no barra. Actually, we might get a day or two, which would be really cool. But um, so this is what we got to do to get our meat, because we don't take any meat with us. We take stuff or food when we do these missions. seriously get home yesterday with no fuel. What the f***? Someone was looking out for us, eh? Hey? How did we use all the fuel? I don't know. We're like, we just poked around the corner. So if you're wondering why that's beeping, it's because we basically used all of our fuel, which meant we're at the bottom of the tank and it sucked up a heap of crap into the, like the water separator in the filter. There's some kind of sensor in there. So basically we need to, it's what happened the other day, like now the motor needs to suck through some clean fuel which we just put in and it should, should stop, hopefully. But that's sketchy, we just did a big trip, thought we had way more, um, like what would you call it, like double kilometres per litre like, than what we actually had. And we, we got back to camp thinking we had heaps of fuel left, poked around the corner here this morning and ran out of fuel. You really got to know your boat, so eh? we're not, yeah, you really got to know your boat when you do trips like this, and we were just lucky. Jesus Christ. So that was cutting it. That's the finest I've ever cut it. On a, it would have been ever. drop anchor, sat phone, try and get Damo or someone. Damo's in Cairns. It would have been drop anchor, EPO probably. Could have been, could have been EPO. We're not out of the bloody woods yet. Maybe we shoot across. I think chuck the other one in and then go. And go. Yeah. yeah. We need to get back to the tide. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Gonna get that bell on. I probably should have filmed all that, but Dame was in the water. I'm yelling out to him that the motor conked out and he, he just kept swimming away, he couldn't hear me. Um, I'm, I'm screaming and screaming and then I'm trying to get the motor going, trying to pump the bulb to get more fuel through. Cause we've had, a, we've had a, like some air issues, air getting into the fuel. Um, so I just thought it was that, but it just sucked dry. There was, there was nothing coming through. So we've had to use the wind to get us back. I took the fuel filter off and there was a little bit of fuel in the filter. And we just um, stuck the line straight into the fuel filter itself and pumped the bulb. We did that a couple of times and got like sort of 50 metres each time and then we just used the wind to get around the point here. Back to camp where we've got the rest of the fuel. Um, and now we've got, we've got a motor back. Oh, we've got 40 litres, so it's cutting it way too fine. But, you know, like I've told you guys, we just got this boat. We don't know the boat and um, you live and learn. I don't recommend doing that. We probably should have done some big trips first, like close to home where there's help. But we were just out of time. So it is what it is, but let's try and make it back. We've got to deal with this weather too. We've got some crappy weather coming. But we're just going to try and get back to camp, get back to the cruises. It's going to be a good feeling. That was a stressful couple of hours. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I said to Dane just before that, you know, with the sort of adventures we go on, there's, um, there's always a risk involved. And I've had quite a few moments in my time that, that stress me out, you know, um, where you do things that could go pear-shaped and um, you sort of go into fight and flight mode, fight or flight, where you're just like focused on getting it done and that was, that was a rookie error going out that far without really knowing the boat. And the reason I'm gonna film all this and release it is because this could help. You know, there might be one young fella who watches this and decides to, um, you know, get to know his boat before he goes on a trip and that could save him. Because we, we were right on the edge of running out of fuel. So we got back to camp, like back to the island last night. Thought we had heaps of fuel left. Um, because of what we'd worked out, the mileage, you know, the, the fuel economy on this boat. Um, we had a bit of a test run and checked the fuel economy, but it was in glassy water with no load on board. And um, we were getting three kilometers per litre. So that's what we based everything on, or thereabouts. Anyway, we got back to the island last night and woke up this morning, did that little run around the corner, did three kilometers and ran out of fuel. Three kilometers, that's it. So if we'd have, stayed one more night out at sea or gone like to one more reef or we were even talking about going night fishing last night if we had done that we would have run out of fuel and been stuck at sea and it would have been an epurb or a sat phone to hopefully someone here that could have helped us um, and then we had 40 liters of fuel on the island so we put that in this morning and uh, it was rough as you guys can probably see now it was rough as guts coming back we had to cross a big shipping channel um, and then we just tried to, we did the safest route rather than go a beeline for, for camp here. We um, went the safest route, we head for mainland and then we hugged mainland all the way back. And it was rough as guts. Um, the motor, or the boat, just couldn't quite get up on the plane. And when it did, you know, I had to sit on like 16 knots and we're, you know, jumping waves and Dane was up on the bow trying to keep the weight up the front. Um, it, was, it was really wild um, and then we'd come down into a trough and the motor would just was it's just not big enough to, to keep us up on the plane. We'd then drop back to like seven, eight knots um, and it would take a bit to get it back up and going again. So it was a wild ride and I, honestly I didn't think we were going to, I didn't think we were going to have enough, enough fuel to get back here. It was like, it was severely miscalculated. Yeah. Not even... We're not 100% like sure yet, not, but... We don't know, but, but 
because we shouldn't have used that much fuel but we're 99% sure because the, when you're trying to prime the bulb it's there's no fuel coming through it was dry this morning and we we just couldn't get the motor started and it's sucking all the crap off of the bottom of the motor too and, and the alarm was going off so oh not the bottom of the motor the bottom of the fuel tank so we're pretty sure that was it we used all the fuel it's just one of those things you've got to be grateful that um, that it worked out this way and not yeah. another way like this could be completely we different. had we had great conditions coming home we were just talking about it we had great conditions coming home if we had Windy conditions. Coming home? Oh, no, last night. Oh, yeah. Last yeah, night yeah. we wouldn't have made it. Yeah, we had three kilometres left in the in the boat when we got back. And um, yeah, but no idea. No idea, like if that was super rough coming home last night, yeah, we would have used more fuel and we wouldn't have made it home. So anyway, that's enough of a spiel and all that. Just um just before you go on adventures. <laughs> Test your boat, make sure you know your boat, make sure you know how much fuel you're going to use, all that. We took enough fuel just to get back here. Yeah, even to get back here. 40 litres it took to get back to here. I reckon we've got a couple of litres left in the boat. Anyway, and then we winged it with this tide. The, the, the high tide was two hours ago, two and a half hours ago. I didn't think we were going to get the boat in here. The adventure gods. Yes, yeah, someone's someone's watching over us. Jeez, girl, you just got us back. Far out. Yesterday, we didn't really get to finish yesterday's episode. We um, got back here to camp. It was all a bit chaotic, you know, we just made it back. We were a bit under the pump and we got back here to camp. We just had so much to do. Um, you know, we hadn't had a wash in like four days. We had this beautiful little freshwater stream, which has slowed down a fair bit now. But yesterday that was raging through here and we've washed all the dive gear in there, um, washed all our dishes again and just had a good wash, good scrub. Oh, Dane washed his locks, and then um, I might have done mine too, and opened everything up, dried everything out, which was really cool. We got heaps of sun, that was nice, um, and just got the, the camp kind of prepped again, which always takes lots of time. You can see how big the camp is here, we've got heaps going on, so it was good to settle that up. And then we decided to go all the way to Cooktown, which is way down south of where we are, and wash all our clothes. We've got two big bags of washing here. Wild Reaches shirts and board shorts, and we got no more clean clothes. So we decided to go all the way down there, wash all our clothes, get some fresh produce, and fill up the boat with fuel, fill up the jerry cans with fuel. The laundromat was shut, so we couldn't wash our clothes, so that's a job to do now. Um, but yeah, we filled up the boat with fuel, which was epic. We met a few of the locals. Big shout out to Jason and Eli, a father and son at the boat ramp there. They come up and said good day. That was really nice. Um, Love meeting locals like that and fans of the show. It's really, um, it's really rewarding. So if you see us on the street, make sure you say good day. This big headland up here, um, you can see a bit of a trough between the two. There's a, there's a creek in there, and it's high tide right now. We're going to put the tinny in, and we're going to run up to that creek, and hopefully, hopefully chase some mangrove jacks, some threadfin salmon will be nice, mud crab, buddy, mud, mud mussel, mud shell, whatever we can find. Really, we're just going to go explore. Um, we're even going to explore the headland. See if there's any like bommies or reef off there that we can chase some coral trout, flick some poppers around, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. now the tinny is up on the roof and this was set up in a way that the quad bike, which is parked up in the bush over there, um, was we're going to use the, the winch off the quad bike to slowly release the boat down off the roof. Now the quad bike, if you jump back, I don't know how many episodes, three or four episodes, it died. We were trying to get out to this river on the quad and all the electrics just shut down and we had to tow it back to camp here. Still trying to work that issue out which is super frustrating. Um, so stick with us, this will be interesting, Dane and I trying to get the tinny off the roof. Then we're going to drag it into the water here on this high tide, throw the motor on it, throw the sounder in, throw all that fishing gear in and go for an explore. Yeah. Uh, but what's the plan mate, how are we going to get it off? Quad's out of action. I'll drag it off, I guess we just 
shuffle it back until it's at its pivot point. Just manpower. We've got enough buoy system to like have both of us at the back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. We can like guide it down and take some weight. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, go. Come to a bit of a standstill here. We've got trees across here, trees across there. That calls the mountain in the background. Zane and I both got bad feelings about like when there's wind and waves pushing into the mangroves. I've just never really had a good session. But this looks good in here, especially over there. completely cooked today. I don't know, maybe we should have fished and run in there. The problem is, even if we do get in there, uh, this tide's still got a little bit to run out and we could quite possibly get stuck in there. Yeah, we're in like, what do you reckon, 300 mil of water? Not even, 250 mil of water. And we normally send the drone up in situations like this and look for a snake drain, but it's so bloody windy and I can't see anything on the screen. It's over the car, so it's not real not picking much up so we've quite possibly cooked today as far as fishing goes the weather and that didn't help though did it oh no the wind is so windy man yeah windy and swell it was all swell along that point up there it just didn't didn't look right i was really hoping to come back through here and chase some mud crabs or something if we can get in behind these mangroves but we're not going to pull up here and walk in, it's just too dangerous. The locals reckon there's a, there's a big crop that hangs around here, so... We want to keep all our limbs. It was in between them and their boat the other day. Yeah. They said it was about five metres. Yeah, big crop. Okay, sound her off. We've just found... A little nook in the mangroves here, as you can see. We're going to go for a walk along the back edge. 
and just see what we can find. It's getting really late in the day. We've caught nothing. So I'm gonna throw in a backpack. Um, don't even know if I need a backpack. Just got a big knife just in case. Um, and oh, there's oysters around here and stuff. But yeah, we'll just go for a walk, see what we can find. We're not gonna be long because I wanna get back to camp. Not too late tonight and just sort of organize everything for an adventure tomorrow. This morning was chaos. Big rock here. Hope there's a bit of a rock wedge underneath it. They might be hiding up in. And there's oysters here, so you wouldn't starve. Definitely be able to get a feed of oysters. It's slippery. Here we go. See that? First bloody rock and there's a mud crab under it. It took too long. To, I was trying to sneak around the back of him because he was like dozed, you know, like he was real sleepy. I was going to get my hand in there behind him, but ah, he's under me. I need a stick. I need a good stick. Damn it. Should have been quicker on him. Good sign though. That was a first. First likely looking spot and there was a mud crab in it and a good size muddy too. That was a keeper. Right, so the muddies also, in Queensland we can only take the males, they're called bucks. And they have to be a certain size which is 150 mil. I don't know what the, it's like overall body size from side to side. I don't know what that part of the body's called, but yeah. Need more rocks. Mm -hmm. Need more rocks. Mm. And I had time to grab him and I just tried to set it up better and get around the back of him. And he was like side on too. He was facing like that way. That way. So I could have just gone in and grabbed him, but I was like, oh yeah, I'll work my way around the back. He's just sleeping. Fully cooked it. Geez, we're only at that thing. And there are rocks around, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How beautiful is this? A little freshwater creek here. So cool. You've got plenty of tucker there in the mangroves. And pure fresh water here. Oh, and there's a crab in there. Tiny little crab. Look like a little jenny. Which means there could be a big buck around. Yeah, and you got fresh water here coming down from the mountain. Sustains life. Oh, so nice on your feet. Alright, she wins. I'd love to keep walking up there and see if you can find a little waterfall, but it's not flowing that hard, but I love doing that. One of our episodes, one of our first ever episodes, I think it was like number three, we were drifting down the Wenlock River in the, in the same tinny, me and Dan, and um, we came across a little stream like that, and I was like, mate, I'm going to go for a walk up here and see what I can find, and found the most stunning waterfall. Oh my God. This is the stuff. This is why we do this. Look at this. 
it just and it blew my mind. It was like to find a waterfall that I wasn't sure if anyone had ever been there before is really special. Is it? Yeah. I'm still not at the back of it. <laughs> There's a big fella in there, man. Somewhere here. <laughs> He's in there. He's got to be. That's perfect. Had a shot at one and blew it. <laughs> mosquitoes, they're winning. Definitely hot. And I'm really dirty now. I'm really <laughs> deflated. I feel like we lost today. Yeah, well. Could call it that. It's got to happen every now and then. Yeah. Alright, we're back at camp. And as you can see behind me here, the tide is extremely low still. And it's not going to come in till well after dark tonight, which in croc country is just too sketchy. And the actual idea, I mean, the plan for the trip was to have the quad bike. And the quad bike would be able to do all this. We could throw this trailer on, the little trailer, and just drive out there, load up the tinny, bring it in, but the bloody quad bike's dead. So, um, we're going to put the little trailer together now. It's up on the big trailer. It's this little guy up here, little fold up trailer, little mini axles and wheels, and Dane and I can just manhandle that out onto the flats and hopefully winch the tinny up onto it. Walk it back. Sounds easy. Sounds easy until we've got to walk it back, and it's going to be hard. <clears throat> a little tow ball and dirt bike. That's not going to work. That was wishful thinking. Change tack. Change tack again. So, dirt bike wasn't going to work. And then we just tried to walk the trailer out and you can see the tracks. About 20 metres. And that was pretty heavy without the boat on it. So now we're just going to walk out with a shite load of rope. Walk the boat in as far as we can for now. And then tie the line off about meters on that road, 50 meters on this one, um, and then put a plonk on the end of it. And then we'll just have to walk out a little way later on, grab it, pull the boat in. The sun's gonna, look at the sun dropping there in the background, the sun's gonna go down, and then the water gets scary. We're not that in. It's a good chance that we can walk the boat right into here. That's going to be a wrap for another episode, guys, up here in Cape York. Thanks for watching. Jump on and get your merch, www.wildreaches.com. We appreciate each and every one of you guys for watching and um, sharing it all around. And we love the community that we're building. We really appreciate all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, see you on the next one.